And even better, there's actually a way to waive the first year's annual fee payment. Let's first go over arguably the best thing about credit cards, the sweet, sweet sign up bonus. While I did get lucky with my timing, just like Nancy Pelosi always gets lucky with her stock pick timings, I was able to snag the short-lived 100,000 point sign-up bonus. This record high of a sign-up bonus is now, unfortunately, simply just a fairy tale. Instead, at the time of this recording, you will not be able to capture a 60,000 point sign-up bonus after spending 4,000 in three months. Which is still pretty amazing considering that these points are valued at $750 according to Chase and could be valued at $1,200 or more, but more on that later on. Right away, the sign up bonus alone will be able to cover almost 8 years of annual fees. Of course, the value does fluctuate depending on how you use them. And if you are looking to maximize your points, you can go through their list of travel partners which include airlines and hotels. But while this generous welcome bonus is pretty much top of the line, it is really just the cherry on top for other benefits that the credit card offers which is just as important to consider for long term use. On to the benefits. Effective August 2021, the Chase Sapphire Preferred now comes with a new $50 recurring hotel credit when booking through the Chase Travel Portal. However, you will not be able to book a hotel outside the Chase Travel Portal and expect to reimburse for this credit. Good thing for you, the Chase Travel Portal, while being a very simple portal to use, does include cheaper but still quality hotels that most people typically would find themselves staying in as well. So even if you just book one hotel stay a year, you drop the effective annual fee to $45. The bigger potential downside to this $50 credit is that when booking through the travel portal, you are not able to use your status that you may have at certain hotel stays. Furthermore, this credit card comes with a 5x back on travel through the Chase portal, 2x on other travel, 3x back on dining, 3x back on online groceries besides Walmart, Target, and Whole Foods, 3x back on select streaming services with 1x back on everything else. A lot of these points will come down to opportunity cost too. So basically this means that if you were to carry and use the American Express Gold Card, you could be earning 4x back on dining with another 4x back on in-store groceries including Walmart, Target, and Whole Foods. But these American Express membership reward points are debatably more challenging to use than the Chase Ultimate reward points since you must transfer MR points to partner airlines and hotels to really achieve value more than half a cent or a cent per point. Of course, with the points that you do receive, you will definitely want a way to cash them out. The most beneficial way to receive the greatest amount of points is when you redeem them for travel partners. This means that you're taking your Chase points and converting them into airline miles or hotel points from another partner program. The way that these points transfer is at a 1 to 1 ratio. So that for example, 20,000 ultimate reward points would equal 20,000 high up points. If you choose the most optimal time to book the transfer of your points, this is where you can see other people getting 2 cents or more per point, which they can then get travel for significantly cheaper than it would have been in cash value. A third way to redeem your points is through the pay yourself back program, which is also through the portal and is valued at 1.5 cents per point. When you are wanting to redeem your points through this program, you first put the eligible category charge on your credit card and then you go into the pay yourself back program inside the portal and are able to redeem your points against the charges that you have incurred. The least effective way to use your points is for a statement credit or a direct deposit, which is valued at 1 cent per point. Even though this isn't the biggest redemption rate to maximize your value, it offers the most amount of flexibility and would be a great way for someone who does not travel and is just wanting the cash value after hitting the sign up bonus. Next, let's talk about the first year value of this card given the benefits. Benefits are severely important. Just about as severely important as remembering to hit the subscribe button and dropping a like. But seriously, make sure that you do take advantage of any credit card that offers an annual fee as the entire reason for paying the annual fee is for you to utilize the benefits to get even more value and money than what you are paying to hold the credit card. Starting off, aside from travel insurance and purchase protection, we have a current welcome bonus value of $750 which is worth 60,000 ultimate reward points. A one year subscription to Dash Pass that is worth $120 which would otherwise cost you about $10 a month if you decided to purchase the subscription instead. A $50 hotel credit when booking through the travel portal and finally 5x points back on lift rides through March 2022. So if you add up these dollar amount benefits, you get a grand total of $920 of free credits. After subtracting the annual fee, that is $825 of first year value if you were to use all the benefits. And it does not even include the additional points from spending that you put on this credit card. This is insane as you are not able to accumulate this type of value from debit cards, which is a major reason why I only use credit cards. And if you would like to learn more on why debit cards are trash, I do go into further detail in this video linked above. I recommend, as well as many other experienced credit card users, 
that if you are someone who's planning to get the Chase Sapphire Preferred or the more premium Chase Sapphire Reserve, you should also be looking into getting the Chase Freedom Flex as well as the Chase Freedom Unlimited. More commonly, this is called the Chase Trifecta, which has become one of, if not the most powerful credit card lineup where you can get the most amount of points possible. In short, the way that this setup works is the Freedom Unlimited and Freedom Flex cards are able to be combined with the Sapphire Preferred or Sapphire Reserve, so that way you can pull all of your ultimate reward points in a one account. The Unlimited and Flex have no annual fees either, on top of earning much better multipliers on categories that the Preferred and Reserve lack on. For example, the Chase Freedom Flex comes with 5% back on rotating categories, while the Freedom Unlimited offers 1.5 points on all other categories. Because of this, you will definitely want to capitalize on the Chase Trifecta to earn the most amount of points possible. Before applying for the Metal, Flashy, Chase Sapphire Preferred, there are a couple things that you must know. The first being that the Chase 5 out of 24 rule, which is essentially a credit card jail, where you cannot have been approved for 5 or more personal credit cards from any credit card company in the span of 24 months. Because of this, it is very important to prioritize getting Chase credit cards first before getting credit cards from different companies. Another rule Chase has is the 1 out of 48 rule, which means you cannot receive the Chase sign-up bonus within 4 years. For example, if you got the sign-up bonus for the Chase Sapphire Reserve less than 48 months ago, you would not be able to obtain the sign-up bonus for the Sapphire Preferred. Additionally, you are not able to actively hold both the Chase Sapphire Preferred and the Chase Sapphire Reserve at the same exact time. A few other things to know before applying for this credit card is that Chase strongly prefers that you have a credit score of over 700 along with at least one year long of credit history and that the Sapphire Preferred is a minimum credit line of $5,000. This means that Chase will not approve you for a credit card limit lower than $5,000. It does help if you have a credit card of a similar limit so that Chase does know that you're capable of using this credit card limit responsibly. But it is not a requirement. This credit card packs a huge punch for an annual fee of just $95 a year. And even better, there is actually a way to waive the first year's annual fee payment if you were to go to the Chase branch in person and talk to them. Then you would only have to pay the fee from the second year onward. In my case, I've never gone to a Chase branch to try this out for myself, but many people have successfully been able to, so you might as well try it out and save $95 that first year. Even if you cannot waive the first year annual fee or are too scared to talk to a Chase representative to get it waived, the first year value is a no-brainer. However, the value from the second year and onward is something that might vary from person to person depending on how much you travel and what you value the benefits at compared to other cards that you might have in your wallet. If you are looking for a low annual fee card that is perfect for travel and has some amazing benefits, this is the credit card for you. Personally, this card was demoted for my wallet just due to the fact that I value a lot of the overlapping American Express Gold benefits over the Chase Sapphire Preferred, but I still plan to carry and hold this credit card as I plan on obtaining the Chase Trifecta eventually. Speaking of the powerful Chase Trifecta, if you have been wanting to get the most amount of ultimate reward points possible, you will want to watch this video right here where I explain everything you need to know behind this OP setup. And with that being said, make sure you check out the description where I have a link to the Chase Sapphire Preferred application along with a few other credit cards. Also, do not forget to get one free stock when you sign up for a Robinhood account and get multiple free stocks when you create an account with We 